Okay, so... We're coming into Final Thoughts. I guess this is the second time we've technically done Final Thoughts on a game we've already played before. So... I guess I'll summarize it with, it's a Castlevania game where the plot is not really all that great, and the characterization of the characters from the prior game are pretty terrible. <laughs> so from like a story standpoint, I don't think you're going to get anything out of it. But from an action standpoint, I have mixed opinions towards it. I will say I favor this version of the game on Steam, you know, the Dominus Collection, with uh, touch controls, so you could use like the right thumbstick, for example, to move around and touch things on the screen. Um, I like that it has different layouts for showing potentially three screens at once instead of just two. So you could see the map and the enemy details as you play. So there are some positives there. I will say the only major complaint about the collection so far, again, I'm very early in the collection, so we'll just talk about this game. I will say that it is very jarring to not have like really good setting options. So streaming this game was very difficult compared to the other game where uh, it just did not take feeds. It's kind of like an emulator thing. Like it definitely feels like we're playing a ROM in a game. And then on top of that, the resize options are actually pretty bad. Uh, but I will say if you're looking to play more casually, like you want to do save states, uh, before any major bosses, or maybe you're looking to test strats out or like manipulate RNG. Uh, those inherent features in the game itself does lend to some casual and I guess some high level play technically for practice. So it's neat being able to go back to those things or like rewind and do things like of that nature. So I, I guess from that standpoint, it's solid. I still think most of my criticisms stand pretty, pretty high, pretty proud. They have not really changed. So what were my complaints from the other one? Uh, they did remove seals in the sense that I don't have to draw them with the right stick. I can input a series of buttons. I will say that's the closest there has been to an improvement on the major complaint. Uh, but from the standpoint of what can you do outside of this version of the game, other versions of the game just remove the seals altogether, which honestly I think I would prefer now having played two different versions. I definitely prefer this over using the right thumbstick or a mouse or a stylus if playing on the DS uh, for doing the seals. So I would say this is probably the least annoying version it is in this game. I still don't like them as a mechanic where potentially you have to draw seals at the end of a boss battle. I just, I never liked it. I don't like touchscreen gimmicks. But putting it into a series of button inputs was not as bad, I will say. Uh, other complaints that I think still stood through stood up pretty well in the playthrough. Uh, if you like certain weapon types like katana, they just don't really drop at all in the castle itself. There are a surprising amount of really good defensive items, and I don't remember if I touched upon that in the review. I feel like it's very easy to get good armor. There's lots of places that are hidden and some that are less as hidden as you go through, and a ton of different accessories depending on whether or not you want to explore um, and I think from that standpoint, I would say the defense, like the accessories and the armors are done pretty well, but they still lock most of the better weapons uh, that you would potentially use to beat the game versus like just general farming behind a lot of soul farming in the first place. So that system still sucks. That hasn't really changed in this version. Um, overall, I still really liked the cancels more in Aria than Dawn. I feel like Dawn can feel a little stiff at points due to the fact that they don't like you rapid dash canceling. So for example, you could do like a katana strike, crouch out of the dash and then attack again to kind of get like a series of rapid attacks. But it just feels like extra effort and on weapon types that are just generally not supported in castle drops, it feels kind of bad that you have to kind of do those techniques just for them to become even semi-competitive with big sword this this playthrough definitely favored big sword just because like the ingredients to craft it were pretty early on when we did bother with crafting uh but overall it does feel like there's only like one or two viable weapon types that we use the entire game like honestly chat like think back we played for like what five hours showing off the castle showing off bonuses and stuff like that and we use like what Dagger, Big Sword, Katana. 
think that's it we we showcased gun but that's more of a joke like we didn't actually bother beating bosses or doing room clears with basically anything else i guess we very briefly used short sword and then i went oh i don't like this i actually prefer knife because i like dash canceling yeah booge exactly so it's like we we use like big slow overhead weapon the most i would say in the entire playthrough because the game does favor drops throughout the castle for those but as i said before if you're looking for more weapon variety as you play this game doesn't really have it i think one thing that i'm still sad about compared to like aria and dawn is just the fact that like there's a soul canister canister and dawn of sorrow i liked it more when there were some guaranteed souls outside of bosses that you could find like for exploration and like technically you might be able to get them elsewhere and that's fine so i feel like dawn kind of has a problem where the beginning of the game it drops like a decent amount of items and then the mid game is just awful garbage unless you craft and then the end of the game, if you know there's a specific wall leading into one of the optional fights, you could get a decent sword. And if you learn to get devil, the fights aren't too bad if you're going in undergeared. But yeah, this game still really heavily favors grinding. They didn't fix anything regarding the luck. So we still went through the suffering of trying to get some very basic souls that are required to beat the game, like Ukabak, for example. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, it's still kind of a grinder's game. And chat knows how I feel about grinding. I do not like to do it in any game that we do. I like to just go start to finish all the way through. So I'm more of a player that would prefer, I don't know, maybe things like no RNG drop stuff. So maybe we'll revisit Julius mode and give comments on that in a separate piece at the end of that specific video. I don't think that really impacts my feeling on the main game itself. I view that more as an extra mode than like something you would do from like a normal play play point standard. So yeah, I, I don't think my opinion has changed too much. I, I think from the standpoint of the bosses, it was neat to manipulate them a little more, I guess, on a second playthrough, knowing some of their attacks. So it was nice to uh, revisit that, I guess, in that sense. But overall, I'm not really, like, in love with the game. I definitely want to try the other Castlevania games in the series. I don't think this, like, deters me. I will say overall, if I would have given the game, like, a D, I actually forget, like, overall what I would have rated it, other than I did not like it and wouldn't play it again. I will at least say it went up to okay. There, I had more fun in this version of the game overall than just playing the DS version. Some of it has to do with taking more time to craft. Some of it has to take has to deal with specifically making sure I get core souls like Mandragora in order to to pop enemies. In particular, for making certain farms easier. Um, and definitely seals. Seals is definitely one of the biggest pain points. I still messed up seals even with the new system. Um, mostly just because I'm potentially clicking between multiple things, which is not like a normal game behavior, I would say. That's more of a that's more of a specific I'm streaming the game issue than anything else. Uh, but overall, like it just uh I don't know. I'm I'm not gonna feel really endeared to any of the boss designs in general. A lot of the bosses are pretty simple. Castlevania, I think, is more meant to feel fun to go fast. And I feel like this game, you don't really get to go fast because they lock all of the good movement for later in the game. Also, by the way, sorry for not playing a soundtrack. But yeah, I just feel like, in general, it's just a shame that some abilities were just locked just way too late in the game. In particular, the ability to fly upwards with like the super uppercut. Or, like, Black Panther being, like, the equivalency of five enemy rooms from the end of the game. It's, like, actual madness. I don't know what they were thinking. So I would have liked to have seen this, I guess, rebalanced a little more. I could see why people would like this in a randomizer. Like, I totally get it. I don't feel the love of replaying the game over and over. I feel like we've played better Castlevanias, and I feel like... We've also played Castlevanias that don't require grinding, which is kind of my mindset when I go into the things. I like going fast, 
I like not needing to necessarily do optional things, but if I do, I get rewarded. And I will say from like a standpoint of exploration, the castle is fairly straightforward. I think I got a little confused in the playthrough only because I really sequence broke the game. <laughs> like, I don't I don't think my playthrough of uh, going through and using cut all, for example, slash Zinqueda or whatever, weapon special hit switches is like a normal occurrence. Um so I will say this is not this is not even the worst castle of the Castlevanias that we played. I actually think for the most part the areas were somewhat interesting. Uh, there's only a couple points in the game where I was like kind of begging for a warp point or a save point a little closer, and that kind of tended towards or trended towards the final areas of the game. But you know, I guess you, you gotta amp up the difficulty somehow. So you know, you you could say that's fair. You know, it should be harder to get to certain points as you get further. But overall, yeah, I just kind of wish there was either more mobility options or easier access to souls. I'm not a big fan of needing to fight enemies repeatedly just to get a basic ability. I'm okay with them dropping like potential random healing items or like equipment potentially, but it's not like quote unquote required to beat the boss. Whereas I do feel like this game still trends towards I really hope you got a soul. If you didn't get a soul, we're gonna give you one pity boss soul that will help beat the final boss, and everything prior to this point is basically useless from bosses outside of, like, mobility options. Chat saying souls are really dumb, way too grindy. Yeah, I mean, we had, like, what, 1% odd souls, we had 2% odd souls, we had 1 in 8s. It just feels bad. Especially when there's like one enemy in a room and you have to reset it over and over and over and over and over. We saw a little bit of that in like Circle of the Moon. I wasn't a fan then, I'm not a fan now. And I do feel like overall weapons did feel much weaker in this game just due to like the animation differences and the lack of- and like how it made canceling a bit harder. With the exception of course being the support soul of Devil. I feel like where this game kind of messed up with the balancing as well is that even though I think they added more interesting attack souls to the game and they added more cancels with some of the souls, which I think is a positive thing. I think that was like one of the few things that was updated that went well. I do feel like it was kind of missing out where we basically played through the entire game and we never changed our passive soul ever. I also feel like a lot of the mobility souls, like for example the ability to fly or even to some extent Black Panther, honestly, should have been in a separate button. In particular, Bat. Specifically, Bat should have been its own button. We should not have to choose between doing damage and flying around. So either we have to juggle it between equipment sets, or we have to unequip every time. Just not great. I, I don't like that as a mechanic. And again, some of that is restrictions. You know, the Game Boy only has so many buttons, but... It is unfortunate. Alvichan says, you don't get a soul, you fight the final boss with a trident. Uh, Do you fight with a trident? I think you fight with the big sword. I don't think that's true. I definitely didn't. I still don't like spears in either version of the game, so there's no way I would have used the spear that it gave us. There's no way I would have used the spear on the way to one of the final bosses. Absolutely not. But the difference, though, as I said before, Calvisham, it guarantees you a soul that actually beats the final boss. So I think they thought about that for people that do want to skip it. It just means that, like, outside of the very beginning, beginning of the game, actually giving you decent souls, or at least decent red souls, which are just kind of, like, spammable attacks, you kind of just have nothing <laughs> for, like, another hour or two hours. Because none of the other boss souls are really all that great. And they're definitely much, much worse than stuff like Mandragora or Guillotiner. So it's just kind of unfortunate. But anyway, chat, that's all I have to say in terms of Dawn. I, my opinion of it is, I still don't particularly want to play it again, but it's definitely one of the best versions, if not the best version that you could play of Dawn of Sorrow. There's a lot of quality of life features from the standpoint of it being technically like the equivalency of a ROM and an emulator kind of thing. So if you have any interest in the game, it's definitely the smoothest experience. But yeah, we'll we'll be see, we'll be revisiting this. I think we'll have one final thought on the collection as a whole as we get further and further into the series. 
but that'll be for a separate video. So chat, I think that covers basically everything. It's a bad game, but it's the best version of it at the game. Yeah, like I would say like the normal DS version was probably my least favorite Castlevania that we played on stream so far. Um, now I feel like it's not, I don't feel like it's a clear loser. I feel like there's some redeeming qualities of it in this version, but I'm still not like wholeheartedly endorsing it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I liked Aria, and to some extent, Circle of the Moon. So it's like, I put it about on... Like, Circle of the Moon prior to Dracula, I think I would have rated it higher than this game. Circle of the Moon doing the Dracula fight. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You're like, uh... <laughs> maybe. I, I didn't like the size of the castle in, um... Uh, what is it? Harmony of Discord, or whatever it is. That, that castle was too big with the AB style castle. So as I said before, there are definitely other castles in Castlevania that I definitely liked a lot less. And this one was okay. Dissonance, thank you. It doesn't help that they use the same initials in Castlevania. I don't know what they were thinking. There's like two HODs, so I can't say HOD because it would be ambiguous as to which one I'm talking about. Oh, Castlevania. You have so many words you could use, and yet use the same ones. Truly a mystery. So yeah, uh, I think we'll be getting to, I guess in terms of play order, I'm very curious how games like Portrait of Ruin and Ecclesia will feel on this game pack in particular. I will, I will guess preemptively I will like them more than this game. So I would say of the DS ones, this one's probably still gonna rank the worst. Compared to some of the other ones, I feel like you you could make an open argument as to which one is like slightly worse or which one is better. But hey, that's that's what it is. It is the earliest of the DS. So it is what it is there. But anyway, chat, that's for another review and that is for another stream. So let's go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. Short final thoughts. It's just, it was okay. It was okay. So with that standpoint, uh, thanks for watching, and I guess hope to see you again in another Castlevania.